Hello, today I'm going to show you how I made this matrix display uh, using this frame that I found in Hobbycraft, which is a craft store in the UK. Uh, if you want to get exactly the same frame, uh, it's called a black shadow box frame, 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters, and it's currently at a price of eight pounds uh, from Hobbycraft. I've got big plans for this particular frame. Um, we're hopefully going to be making some little games for it. Maybe things like Snake, possibly Tetris, anything that lends itself to a pixelated display like this. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to show you how I uh, constructed the frame itself and how you can get started. Well, it looks like inside the uh, the photo frame, inside the matrix, you can see we have 16 strips of 16 WS2182B uh, NeoPixel style LEDs. Uh, they come in a reel just like this. Uh, you cut them down to 16 uh, pixel strips and I've arranged them on the board so that there's a, say, they're sort of equidistant apart horizontally and vertically. Uh, we have the plus five volt power supply coming in down here and this uh, silver strip here is actually a piece of copper tape that I put a little bit more solder on top of because it was quite thin tape just to make it a bit more robust so the five volts comes in here and then it's soldered across to the five volt connections on each one of the strips likewise on the left hand side we have the ground connection coming in so this black wire here again connected to a solder covered copper piece of tape and again little piece of wire coming off each one connecting to the ground connection on each strip this just seems to be the easiest way to wire that up. The signal uh, that goes into the strips comes in through this little black wire here, and it comes in the bottom right corner down there, and where it says D in, and you make sure you get these strips the correct way around, so the arrows are pointing that way on these strips, so the signal will flow through each one of these LEDs here. And what I've actually done is I've connected the end, the D out here, to the D in back on this side over here, so it runs, the signal runs along here, and then it goes underneath the board and runs along this one and then underneath the board all the way up. Now that seemed to make sense at the time. It makes it a little bit easier to program when you're trying to make patterns appear on the matrix. However, since actually wiring this up, I've discovered that uh, libraries such as FastLED actually don't seem to care which way around you do them. Uh, there, are, there are functions available that will make it work regardless of whether you have it wired and then zigzagging back or whether you have the uh, signal coming through the first strip and they're going into the second one, and they're going into the third one, and into the fourth, like in a serpentine pattern. That would actually be a lot easier to wire up. Um, if you are going to do that, of course, remember you have to alternate the direction of each one of these black strips. So here you've got the arrows pointing along this way. On the next strip, you'd have the arrows pointing in that direction. So you make sure that the signal flows through uh, correctly. Another major component that goes into this build is the grid that sits in front of the pixels and makes them a, a square shape on the actual display. Now I started off trying to do this and I, uh, I built this little thing. Uh, this is made of three millimeter black uh, foam board and this was actually cut by hand with a Stanley knife and, and put together to quite a long time, maybe a couple of hours to actually make this. The problem is, although it looks quite nice at the moment, it's not exactly even and that's really, really obvious once you get the LEDs behind it. So I kind of gave up on that and ended up using um, some laser cut cardboard instead. And here's what that actually looks like. Uh, there's a strip missing just there. This is uh, one of the strips. And so I've got 34, I believe, of these strips produced. I got a friend to, to laser cut these for me. And then I simply stacked them together in this, these rows like this. And because it's laser cut, it's a lot more even and uh, it makes it look a lot better. I then put a tiny drop of super glue on each uh, little junction, on each corner there. And that's held it together uh, quite firmly and quite a robust. Uh, little little object. I just need to stick this last one back in. And then I get another couple of dabs of super glue on that to, uh, to hold it in place. We're now going to build this up into the, uh, the finished matrix. So if we start off with the actual frame. It's a nice reflection of my lamp there. And uh, the first thing I'm going to put in is this little white piece of cardboard, this white border. Uh, this came with the frame, uh, but it's actually a little bit too thick, so I had to cut a few millimetres um, off the inside there. So let's put that in. Okay. Uh, we're going to then put a piece of paper in, and this piece of paper is going to be used to diffuse the light from the LEDs. Let's put that in like so. Uh, then this little wooden frame, which again came as part of this box frame. So let's throw that in. Uh, and then we're going to put the grid in that we made earlier uh, from the laser cut cardboard. And then finally we're going to put the LED matrix uh, on top of that. Please excuse the rear of this, this hasn't been tidied up. Put that into place. I'm going to fold over these black tabs. And that should 
keep everything in place. Uh, so that's what it looks like from the front. Not very exciting at the moment, but uh, let's change that. And let's see what this thing can do. The final piece of hardware we have to think about uh, with this matrix is how we're going to actually control it, how we're going to drive it. Now, previously I've used Arduinos to do this, but they are quite limited, especially the smaller ones are quite limited in the amount of SRAM they actually have. Uh, for example, the Arduino Nano, and I think Uno as well, has 2K of RAM. Now, that sounds like quite a lot for most microcontroller applications, but when you're using a matrix, each LED uh, has to have a, an array uh, to store the color data for, for, the, for the lights. And the problem is that uh, if we have 256 LEDs, like we do in this case, you're already using 768 bytes out of the 2K bytes uh, in total. That means you don't have a huge amount of space left for your program. In this instance, I've decided to use the ESP32. Uh, one of the reasons is the huge amount of SRAM that you get comparatively compared to the Arduinos. Uh, I think this comes with 512 kilobytes, which is an enormous amount compared to the 2K that you get on the uh, Nano. But the other reason is that it actually comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. And that's going to be quite useful for what I have planned for this matrix in the future. So the connections here are very straightforward. I have this orange wire here, which is going to D5 on my development board. And that's going to provide the signal to the LEDs to tell them what they need to do. Uh, we also have a red wire here going to the V in. So that's going to take the 5 volts from the USB in, and then we're going to take that 5 volts out. And we're going to give that to the matrix. And we have this blue wire here, uh, which is the ground connection. One thing to be aware of, if you are running this from a USB cable connected to your computer, make sure that the maximum brightness of the LEDs is set fairly low. Uh, these matrix can pull a huge amount of current, actually. If you turn them all on full power, uh, all on white, for example, uh, you can draw a few amps. Now, that's not a good idea to do from a, a laptop USB port. So make sure the brightness is set. I usually keep it on about 100 or something along those lines, and that seems to be fine. It doesn't trip anything out. I've connected all the wires up, and I've uploaded an example from the fast LED library, in this case called XY matrix, and we get the result that we can expect. I can see all of the pixels are working correctly, I've got lovely uh, color contrast going on there, and the amount of light getting through the paper there is probably about right. I remember in this case I've reduced the brightness down, this is running at brightness level of 64 at the moment, simply so I don't draw too much power from the computer USB port. And here's another pattern, uh, simply produced by changing the variable within the same sketch, uh, the variable is called K matrix serpentine layout, if you change that to true from false, uh, you actually get this pattern, which I think looks even better than the, the previous one. Well, thanks for watching. I've got some uh, good plans for this uh, particular matrix. We're going to be using the Bluetooth or the onboard Bluetooth on the SP32 controller to make a couple of games, perhaps, that we can control uh, using our phones. So that should be quite fun. Again, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.